So gang, I'm starting a new series of videos on the channel of fragrance houses and their best of, which will consist of, of fragrances from the past and currently. So there will be fragrances that are discontinued, but it's an overview of the entire house and their best of. And I'm going to try and stick to doing 12 fragrances from each house. Some might be more. But with today's video, we're talking about Maison Francis Kirkjian, which came on the scene in 2009. And I've got 12 fragrances here, chronological, and I consider these the best of from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian. So if you want to find out about them, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian. Yes, today is the first time I'm doing the best of in a new series of videos I'll be doing on specific houses. And I'm going to stick to 12 fragrances. Sometimes there might be more, but there might be a, a different theme about them. But generally, it'll be 12 and 12 from a house. The best of, and again, I'm warning you now, a lot of you complain why I feature discontinued fragrances. Well, this house has released some really, really great fragrances that have been discontinued and they've got to be highlighted but uh, you know if you don't want to watch videos that feature discontinued fragrances then please uh, click to the next video but we've got the best of here from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjian we're gonna go back in time to 2009 and starting with a discontinued fragrance from this house and uh, it's a palm a piece of me pour homme from 2009. So this is one of the first fragrances this house came out with, launched in 2009. I discovered this house in 2012 at Neiman Marcus. I didn't know about it prior to that. And this is around the time I was getting into really like getting deeply into niche fragrances. It might be a year before I discovered them, but really discovered them in 2012. So this A Piece of Me or A Palm Pour Homme is something that reminds me of other fragrances that Francis Kirkjian has created. Most specifically, this one right here, Gautier 2, which was actually recently relaunched by the house of Gautier. It's Tunisian orange blossom, amber, and cedarwood. So it's basically the marriage of orange flower, orange blossom, and amber together, which is basically that too. But I believe in that fragrance, they have uh, jasmine instead of orange blossom. They say jasmine. I get orange blossom with that one. In fact, when I did my review of that one I said it reminds me of orange blossom and to me these two fragrances are sort of similar and when I first smelled a piece of me or a palm it reminded me of the original version of Gautier squared it's basically squared I like to call it two but uh, it's Gautier squared but this is uh, one of the best creations for this house I absolutely love it Sadly, it's discontinued. It got discontinued probably around the pandemic early on. Early on, the house of uh, Maison Francis Kirkjian discontinued three great fragrances, and they're all here right now. I'm going to talk to you about them in this video, but this is one of the best. You'll also notice that this will be more of a male-focused list because I don't have a lot of feminine fragrances in this list. I was always buying the, the male versions. There's a lot of unisex for sure, but this particular version, I believe there was a femme version, a pom pour femme, but for me, a pom pour homme is really, really a great fragrance, but sadly it's discontinued. But it's one of the best from Maison Francis Kirkjian. Let me know if you're a fan of this one, a pom pour homme. I think there were fans out there there was some weird rumor that it was going to be brought back to, but I don't know if that's really true. Moving on to Lumiere Noir Homme, the very first fragrance I bought from this house, going back to 2012. Lumiere Noir Homme was launched in 2009, just like a pom, a piece of me. And I like this one because when I first started getting really into niche fragrances, I was kind of obsessed with rose fragrances because prior to that, I wouldn't even think about wearing rose as a fragrance myself but then I got really into rose and this one really caught me and I loved patchouli as well and this one had the combination of patchouli Bulgarian rose there's spices in this one and then there's also mugwort but it didn't wear heavy it didn't wear dense there was a lightness about it Lumiere means light in French doesn't it 
So, uh, I mean, it had a lightness about it, so it didn't seem heavy to wear. But the combination is really, really great. And patchouli and rose work really wonderfully together all the time. Here, they did it, he did it, like Francis Kirkjohn did it in such a nice way, made it easy to wear. And once again, this is an Ohm fragrance. I don't know what the Femme version smells like whatsoever, uh, but really, really love this one. Wore it quite a bit. And again, at the beginning of the uh, pandemic or just before, I found out this uh, Lumiere Noir Ohm was discontinued. And uh, unfortunately, things don't last. If you like a fragrance, buy a backup. I mean, if you really love a fragrance, buy a backup. But let me know if you're a fan of Lumiere Noir Ohm. This is all I have left. Uh, with the Epalm, I have two bottles of it, which is great. Uh, but uh, with Lumiere Noir, I only have one bottle, so it's, uh, well, half a bottle. But let me know if you're a fan of that one. This next one is the one that I'm actually searching for a bottle, but I think I might have found a bottle. A friend of mine is actually selling a bottle of Absolute Pour L'Issoir. Absolute Pour L'Issoir came out in 2010. And again, this one did get discontinued at the beginning of the pandemic. But this is, I mean... It, Around that time, I actually shot a video and how I compared this fragrance to Dior's Mitza and also Serge Dutin's Ombre, uh, Ombre, uh, drawing a blank, Ombre Sultan. So the three fragrances, not identical, but there are reminders of the three in each fragrance. They go in different directions, of course. For me, Absolute Pour Le Soir was the muskiest, did have the animalic touches, which made it quite sexy. And unfortunately, it got discontinued. Sad, it got discontinued, but it was a great fragrance. Really, really great fragrance. It's a benzoin siam, Bulgarian rose honey, cumin, frankincense, and sandalwood. Super, super delicious fragrance. It's kind of uh, like Mitza, as I was saying, but more of a muskier take on it. And with Serge Lutin's Ombre Sultan, with less aromatics in there, because uh, Ombre Sultan has a lot of aromatics in there, like uh, herbal touches. And of course, there's this kind of fuzzy muskiness in this that's quite sexy. And then of course, the cumin gives you that kind of sweaty kind of a vibe in a fragrance. Absolutely wonderful. This is Absolute Pour Le Soir from the house of uh, Maison Francis Kirkjohn, launched in 2010. So the next fragrance is still selling. This is Aqua Universalis Forte, here launched in 2011. This is uh, still one of my favorite fragrances, and it is a very clean fragrance. Could come off a bit soapy, but to me, it's a bit laundry detergent-like. It has that fresh laundered linens kind of a smell because there's musky notes, but to me, the musky notes are, I think, white musk, which is creating this very clean effect here. There's Sicilian citron, Egyptian jasmine, musky notes, Calabrian bergamot, white flowers or white blossoms, rose absolute and cedar. And the thing wears so great. It has great longevity, I should say. It's not an extra de parfum, but it's an eau de parfum. And the original is an eau de toilette, I believe. And I never got into the original, which I, I believe there are fans of it. I went straight to the Forte because I liked my fragrances strong. And this one did smell a little better than the original, whereas the original could be even lighter and airier. This one to me had some density and I really liked that whole fresh laundered linens kind of a smell. In fact, I believe they already they sell laundry detergent with this particular fragrance. I've even bought it myself from Neiman Marcus and I've worn, uh, you know used it in my laundry. I, I wouldn't buy the laundry detergent again. I don't know. I think it didn't really do really well. But to me, when I wear this, it does remind me of fresh laundered linens. I don't know if you guys get that or not, but let me know if you're a fan of Aqua Universalis Forte from 2011. That's still selling today, thankfully. But unfortunately, this next one is no longer selling. This one, I believe, got discontinued before the pandemic started. I don't know. There was a lot of stuff going on with fragrances when things, uh, when that pandemic, that crazy pandemic started. Uh, a lot of things got discontinued. But this fragrance was a discovery at the actual Maison Francis Kirkjan Boutique in Paris on the Rue Alger. I believe that's the name of the street. This is Oud Kashmir Mood X-Ray, this one right here. Very interesting smell. It wasn't the rose ones. It didn't have rose in it. It just had a very interesting smell with the Oud. And the way it was done smelled super, super fantastic. I'm going to go ahead and spray it on. It's been a while since I've sprayed it on. And this is the only bottle I have left. The only bottle. There's a bit of... Um, 
creamy consistency in this oud, and I feel like I'm getting that from the vanilla, the Siam, benzoin Siam note, and the Moroccan labdanum note. But the rest of it has a bit of a greasy, oily characteristic with the oud in here. It's Laotian oud. But one of the best oud fragrances for me to this day, I really like the way it smells. It does have that kind of like creamy consistency, almost like a gelatin. But against it, there's a greasiness of the, like, like car grease with the oud in here. Super, super amazing smell. Amazing. I, I, don't, I guess the reason things get discontinued is because most likely it's not selling or other reasons could be that its uh, ingredients are banned or too expensive to re re reproduce and things like that. But this is one of the best ouds from the House of Maison Francis Christian. Absolutely love it. It smells great. I love that stuff. And speaking of an oud that's still selling, this was one of the oud fragrances. I remember going to Neiman Marcus and seeing four oud fragrances. There was the oud, the original oud. There was oud silk mood, which is the extra version here. There was cashmere oud, and then there was velvet, oud velvet mood. And this one was the one that I was drawn to, but that one I discovered at the boutique in Paris and really fell in love with it over there. But the Oud Silk Mood Extra is that, you know, very typical combination of rose and Oud, but we've got Bulgarian rose here in Oud Silk Mood Extra. We've got Laotian Oud. We've got Blue Chamomile and Papyrus. And again, the, the combination is great. Just the way that uh, Francis Crookshun did for this fragrance, he did a great job with it. In fact, it was so popular, they came out with a Eau de Parfum version where originally it was an extra version that they launched. But a great combination of the rose. The rose is beautiful, jammy, big voluptuous rose. The oud is uh, like the same kind of oud that's in cashmere oud, but this is not a stinky oud. It's not gross oud. It still has that kind of greasiness that I have discovered in cashmere, oud cashmere mood. But this one's a lot more, you know, with that rose presence really in your face. And then that papyrus comes in, gives you this very unique kind of a characteristic of vetiver, patchouli, and some other woods together. Really great offering here. It's still a really, really great smell. This one probably sells a lot more. That's why they've kept it in the collection. And I think it I definitely think it's one of the best from this uh, collection. This is Oud Silk Mood from the house of Maison Francis Kirkchen. The next best fragrance from this house is another discontinued fragrance, unfortunately. It's Ciel de Gum, this one right here. This is super fantastic. This one actually is another fragrance I discovered from the actual Maison Francis Kirkjum boutique in Paris. This had launched in 2013. I purchased it in 2015. I travel. I used to travel in winter to Paris and it was really cold and snowy, I believe, when I was in the store. And this one came off really, really warm and spicy. And to me, it's very cinnamony. It's a cinnamony, hot, kind of a hot, you know, spiciness. But most likely it's pink pepper because I, they don't list cinnamon. But for me, I get a cinnamony edge with this one along with amber, vanilla, and jasmine. And it kind of takes me back to the 80s for some reason of those big spicy fragrances that were really popular towards the latter part of the 80s. I'm not saying this is uber vintage, but the combination is so super delicious. It was exclusively made for that store, Gum. I think that's how you pronounce it. Somebody corrected me the other day. Not gum, but Gum. Ciel de Gum, I guess, is the, the sky of Gum. And it makes sense because Russia, Moscow gets really cold and icy, snowy. And this is a very, very warm, spicy fragrance. Stay tuned for a, a video tomorrow on warm, spicy, cinnamony, hot fragrances. And this to me gives me that kind of a feel. Totally does. Reminds me of Red Hots uh, with pink pepper rather than uh, cinnamon. But sad it's gone. If you don't have a bottle, I don't know how you would be able to get a bottle. It's really difficult to get. And what I like about this one, you could see the actual department store sky, the roof, the ceiling and stuff like that. So anyway, that is Ciel de Gum from the house of Maison Francis Kirkjohn. The next fragrance is still selling. This is Aqua Vitae Forte, this one right here. This launched in 2015. And once again, I went straight to the 
Forte rather than go to the original because I like my fragrances a little more concentrated. So the original is most likely Eau de Toilette. This is an Eau de Parfum. It's Mandarin Orange, Orange Blossom, Ylang Ylang, Benzoin, Bergamot, Lemons, Cinnamon, Sandalwood, Gayak Wood, Cardamom, Pink Pepper. So what I like about these two fragrances, they're citruses from this house that go in different directions, but the Aqua Vitae Forte is more solar, a little tropical, sunny, warm, whereas uh, Aqua Universalis Forte is definitely clean, laundry fresh, and I like that difference about them. They're really, really great fragrances, but again, totally different, but in that Forte version where they're a little concentrated compared to their Eau de Toilette, uh, you know, uh, counterparts. But wonderful offering. Again, if you like sunny, solar, floral, citrus floral fragrances, this is sunshine in a bottle. You should definitely try Aqua Vitae Forte. I consider it one of the best from this house. Still, it is, I believe it's still in existence because I made sure to check all these still selling. And it smells really, really great. If you like that idea, a bit tropical and then sunshiny, beachy solar qualities, then definitely try Aqua Vitae forte from the house of Maison Francis Kirkchen. So this next fragrance is also really one of the best fragrances from this house and this one most likely is very popular. They've kept it around. It came out in 2015. It's Oud Satin Mood and the EDP. Not the e X-ray, which I believe the X-ray came out afterwards. I, I believe that's how it happened. Maybe it's the other way around where they came out with the X-ray first, but I think the EDP is the first version. I still haven't got my nose on the X-ray. But this is, once again, another oud, but a very easy to wear oud. It's got damask rose, Turkish rose, there's vanilla, benzoin, violets, amber, and of course that Laotian oud that's in all the other oud fragrances. This to me has a bit of a makeup vibe. And again, it's a bit, I wouldn't say gourmand, but it's got the sweetness that's in here that makes it for the fragrance to be worn a little easier to, uh, to wear, kind of a thing I was trying to say. And that vanilla kind of makes that. It's oud but I don't get much of an oud presence in this one. It's very faint in the background and I do get that kind of uh, makeup-y effect with this one and I believe it's the fact that it's rose and violets that gives you that kind of like a makeup vibe. But I, I like it. It's a sweet uh, take on oud. Very easy to wear I think uh, and I think definitely one of the best from this house. Do you prefer the extra version of this or do you like the EDP version? Do let me know. Put a comment down. This is oud satin mood in the EDP version. And the next fragrance I'm going to feature here, it's called Grand Soir, launched in 2016. This is it right here. Definitely one of the better fragrances. And I think what happened was they made Absolute Pour Le Soir a boutique exclusive when Grand Soir launched. I believe it was kind of an evolution. They made it a lot more easier to wear with Grand Soir. It's still an amber, but they, they, they took out the sweatiness and the muskiness, the fuzziness, and made it a, a much more wearable amber fragrance. I, I like the, the smell. For me, when I wear it, there's a bit of a chocolatey edge in there. I don't know where I'm getting that. Like more like a cacao sprinkling rather than like chocolate chocolate, but a really wonderful, uh, you know, amber fragrance with benzoin, vanilla, tonka beans, labanum. There is lavender in here as well to give you a bit of an aromatic edge. And of course, as I said, I am getting that bit of a sprinkling of chocolate. Really great fragrance from this house. I've wore so much of it. I used to speak a lot about it. I've moved on to some more stronger, more deeper, richer amber fragrances. But uh, I think this still is a really a great fragrance. Smells really sexy too. So Grand Soir from the house of Maison Francis Kirchner. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. If you had Absolute Pour Le Soir or Grand Soir, which would you prefer? So if you notice, I did not feature Baccarat Rouge 540 because that came out in 2015, but I am featuring the X-Ray here, which came out in 2017. So the original fragrance came out in 2015. By the time Grand Soir came out, Baccarat Rouge 540 had already launched. But like I said, I'm featuring the X-Ray here because I prefer it over the original. And this came out in 2017. And once again, this is saffron with bitter almonds, ambroxan, cashmere, Virginia cedar, Egyptian jasmine, ambergris. Do you guys like this one? Is it overdone? Too many people wear it? Too many copies of it? Too many dupes, clones? I still really like the smell. And I always mention I was not a fan of it when it first launched. That's why I'm featuring this one because the original was one that I kind of despised when it first came out. I did not like the smell. But it grew on me and now I'm addicted to the smell. It's almost like cocaine, you're addicted to it. But this is super sexy. Great trail, massive trail, 
lots of, uh, you know, ambroxan in here mixed with the saffron and the jasmine and the cedar. And then of course the almond touch here, very, very intoxicating. Definitely one of the best from this house, makes the, the house very popular uh, and successful because a lot of people like the, the way this smells. So that's Baccarat Rouge 540 X-Ray. And then uh, we're ending the list with a duo of fragrances that were launched together, which launched in 2019. So Gentle Fluidity Silver, Gentle Fluidity Gold, you are supposed to layer the two together or wear them separately. They do smell great. They have the same notes, but some are less in the other, more in the other kind of a thing. Uh, so they make different fragrances. Of course, the silver is very screechy, metallic, sharp, and cold, ice cold. And they've got the juniper berries in here, really amped up, vanilla toned down. And then with the gold, the vanilla is toned up, and then the juniper berries are toned down. So it's more of an ambery fragrance. And you can combine the two together, and then it'll balance each other out, or wear them separately. I did not really care for the silver when I, when it first launched. I felt it was too sharp for my nose. I've gotten used to it and I do really enjoy its uh, metallic touches now. It has great longevity for what it is as well. It's super sexy. Both of them are really, really great and I am featuring them here as the number 12. Since they came out together and are meant to be worn together, I am featuring the both of them. So I've, most likely I've left off something that you like from this house. Unfortunately, I couldn't fit more than 12, but I consider these the best of the best from the house of Maison Francis Crickchen. What do you guys consider the best of the best from the house of Maison Francis Crickchen? And what did I miss? You might be liking something like Petite Matin or A La Rose or maybe Velvet, Oud Velvet Mood, maybe the original Oud from this house, something else? Let me know, put a comment down. But maybe you can put down your top five or the top 10 from this house. You consider the best of the best, including some of those discontinued ones that, um, uh, you know, that I mentioned here for you guys. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please list below. Please like this video. Please share it. Follow me on Instagram and Facebook, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.